what is the meaning of perilous time? What is the meaning of perilous times? Before I get into that, let's look at it from the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. Then we'll define perilous times. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. The Bible says, But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will what? Come. Know it. In the last days. But know this. In the last days, perilous times will what? Come. We have already been told it will come. Am I surprised? It should not be. Everything happening has been planned. And that is why we have already been told there will be war. There will be rumors of war. There will be famine. There will be death. There will be earthquake. But when they start to happen, know this, that perilous times will come. The coming of perilous times is a confirmation that we are in the last days. Amen. I said, the coming of perilous times is a confirmation that you and I are facing perilous times. If these signs that we have discussed are real and these things we have discussed, know that we are in perilous time. Perilous time is a time that is dangerous. It's a time that is what? Dangerous. When we talk about perilous time, perilous time is a time that is very risky. It's a time that is very what? Risky. Perilous time is a time that is what? It is deadly to live on. You know, it's a time what deadly to live on. Why? Perilous times are dangerous, they are risky, and they are deadly to live on. Why? Because it's a time when government promotes evil over good. It is because systems promote what? Evil over good. Churches promote what? Evil over good. Families promote what? Evil over good. Relationships promote what? Evil over good. Even marriages promote what? Evil over good. The Bible said in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. We are in the last days. Mind you people, if God said that something will come, it will come. If it doesn't come, then the word of God is a lie. And God is not a liar, so it must come. What we need is revival in perilous times. Remember, I began to teach how do we survive perilous times. Perilous times is a period, is a time when men will care less about their soul. Perilous time is a time when men will care less about their soul. It's a time when people will care less about their prayer life. It's a time when men will care less about their spiritual growth. In perilous time, people don't really bother about their spiritual growth. Why? It is because their desire in perilous time is work and how to feed their flesh. Then you know that we're in the perilous times. Now, what are the symptoms of the perilous times? Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 3 from verse 2. Symptoms of the perilous times. What are the symptoms of the perilous times? The Bible said, for men will be lovers of themselves. Men will be what? Lovers of themselves. One. Two. Men will be lovers of money. Men will be what? Lovers of money. Men will be boasters. Men will what? Boast. So when you see a man boasting, he is only manifesting prophecy. That man is only what? Manifesting prophecy. In perilous times, men will be proud. Men will be what? Proud. Men will be what? Blasphemers. They will blaspheme God. They will blaspheme Titan. They will blaspheme sowing of seed. They will blaspheme the altar. They will blaspheme servants of God. That even you will be afraid to mention their names. When you see men, blaspheme men like, I don't even want to call their name because I can't call their name. But you see small, small boys mocking servants of God, mocking the things of God. There is no respect. Men will become disobedient to parents. Perilous times. Men are usually what? Unthankful. Men are usually what? Unthankful. You go to a village, bring a boy who did not know how to read and write. You train him in school or you train her in school and then make sure that she or he graduates. 
As soon as he starts to work, he's a graduate. He will remind you how he suffered in your house. Was he not cleaning the floor and flushing your toilet? As if you were not working. You were also cooking and he was eating. But he will only remember what you did and come and see the mother by that time. My daughter, my son, you used her. Who uses who, please? Who uses who? If that child was in the village, if that daughter was in the, maybe she would have followed other children in the village drinking Igbo. But because you shielded that person and protected that child, that child today is somebody. Who will be her biggest enemy? The person that made him or trained her or helped her. You become what? Because men will be what? Unthankful. Perilous times. Men will become what? Unholy. Unholy. What does it mean to be unholy? Men become unholy when there is nothing they cannot define. There's nothing they cannot insult. There's nothing they cannot walk upon. They don't even know that this is an altar anymore. They don't even know that there are things that belong to God. But when you see chicken, eggs that they drop in your office, you start panicking. Some native doctor have tied red cloth on the door to my office. You, you, you panic when you see witches. You panic when somebody tells you I'll deal with you. Because you don't know God. You don't know what is holy. You fear what is unholy. Because you've lost holiness. Perilous times. Verse 3. If you truly want to overcome perilous times, you must learn to be. You must learn to walk with God again. Perilous times. Men will become what? Unloving. Men will become what? What does it mean to be unloving? What it means to be unloving is when you take out time. Are you getting me? I, go, I do hospital visitation. So I, I can't stop it. It's like a habit. It's a tonic in me. So when I, I think it was two weeks ago, there was an emergency that took me to a, a park lane a emergency. So when I came into the hospital that night, I saw people that were very sick. Now, I would want to pray, but I don't just go straight and start praying because people are fearful of everybody. The sick is unloving. Those who are coming to prayer, what? Unloving. So what I do is, I will stand in one place and I'll start praying in the Holy Ghost for a very, very long time. Now, when I stand and pray in the Holy Ghost, people will notice that a presence and a person came and I stay there, I pray and I pray and I pray. I wait until the Spirit of God opens up somebody's heart. Then by the time I go to that very place, and sometimes I don't really say much. I may just go with my worship song that is in my phone. So I'll start to play that song. When I start to play the song for the sick person, after some time I begin to see the family members that were afraid of me. When the song begin to work on the man's life, they start to relax. Like there was a man that day, the man was so distressed. They had put oxygen, he was everywhere. He couldn't move, they couldn't talk to him. And you know, I think it should be very difficult for a man who is struggling with his life. People are holding his head, holding his hand so that he won't fall out from the bed. Maybe the man is fighting death. So I brought one song, it was an anointed song. And I didn't talk to them, I just kept the song there. And the song kept on playing. After some time, the man began to relax. I was watching. I was careful. I'm very careful because men are unloving. Even when you go to do good, you can be seen and be misunderstood. Because people who go to pray in hospital will come back and say, we want money. And people need to be careful who they are allowing to pray for their own. Very last times are times of full of wickedness. After some time, the man was listening to this song and then he continued to relax. Then when I saw that he was relaxed, I knew he could talk. So I began to pray. I was hearing a man. The man was not saying a man. Before you know it, the man was almost quickened in his spirit. He was now praying along with me. That was when the family now relaxed. They looked at me. He has many children. There were about seven or eight of them. Everybody now relaxed. They were now looking at me. Very soon they came, took their own phone, took that same song that I was praying for their father. They started searching it out so that they can continue the assignment. By the time I was done, one girl came to beat the father that was on oxygen to give him money. People are like the sisters. Are you so wicked? Can't you see Papa is sick? Are you collecting money from Papa? Who? And the girls just, tua, tua, and the, 
People started to fight. And their father was in oxygen. We don't know kill the man to hear your children fighting at such a time. Perilous times. No love. Well, that's we are now saying. We don't want to make it. To fear. You know, elders we are watching. How can you be fighting for collecting of money when your father is in this condition? People who born this kind of children, where come this kind of generation? Where sin enter this kind of wicked people that we have in this season? Eh? Perilous times. People are slanderous. People are what? Slanderous. Perilous times are when men don't have self control. You know, why do we lose self-control? Is this thing about wickedness? You understand me? See, when people continue doing wicked things and wicked things become a normal thing, a child comes home and tells their parents that my madam did this. You should go and ask the madam what really what happened. You should go. Never you end a case with one Person. Listen to the truth so you will know the truth. But they will carry fight. They will carry what? No control. And start to fight without finding out the truth and investigating. There is no time to ask questions. There is no time to have self-control. To manage anger. To manage anger. No time to manage anger. The last count of our last prison visit Guess how many people are waiting trial? 200 and something people are waiting are on the death row in Enugu prisons right now. 200 and something people. I remember as someone who does yearly prison visits for more than consistently for 20 something years. I've, I've seen that the number never went more than 50. But just in about two years or thereabout, the thing jumped to 200 and something. These men are condemned, not awaiting. Condemned is over 200 and something people. I know that before a man is condemned, the person would have been. And remember that one man in prison that is caught, there were maybe another, maybe out of 1,000 people that is a thief, only one is in prison. Are you following me? So if there is one condemned man, <laughs> how many is outside that have done the same thing that we are not caught go from human trafficking go from child trafficking go from child abuse go to girls abuse go to talk it check it they don't, they don't feel nothing anymore it just sounds let us go ahead and do it because there's problem everybody goes into that so much evil, so much wickedness. It's a time when men are lovers of themselves rather than God, having a form of godliness but denying his what power. Can we pray? Let's say, God, save us, save our children, save our husband, save our wife, save us from this wicked generation, deliver us. Today, in the name of Jesus, deliver us from selfishness. Deliver us from becoming boasters. Deliver us from being proud. Deliver us from being treacherous. Deliver us from being stubborn. Deliver us from being unforgiving. Deliver us from being unloving. Deliver us from being disobedient in Jesus' name. You know, if you look at that, the Bible also added here that men shall become brutal. Men shall become what? Brutal. See, when, when men become brutal, you need brutal truth. What did I say? When men become what? What do you need? You need brutal truth. Because men are brutal. If you don't engage yourself in brutal truth, men will destroy you. Men will do what? Destroy you. Because they will challenge you with something that you know not about. Be bold to reply. The person with what is what? The brutal truth. I truly pray for everyone here under the sound of my voice that the good Lord will touch you. Let's look at that. 2 Timothy 3 verse 5. I'm happy that we're actually looking at it from the Bible. We're looking at it from the Bible so that you see where they are 
then I could start closing up. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 4. We'll bring them out. If at this point you find yourself babbling with any of this category of sin, ask God to deliver you. Ask God to? Men will become what? Traitors. Men will become what? Traitors. You know, that's what I was describing now. Traitors. Head strong. Head what? Haughty. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Head strong. You will give a child instruction ten times. That child will go ahead and do the opposite of that. Ten what? Times. Ten times. Did you notice that? People are getting increasingly stubborn, disobedient, and forgetful of instructions. But I, I refuse. You must follow instructions. I refuse. Because See, the kingdom of God must still reign in your own territory and in your own life. You must still insist in order. You know, it's like they allow lawlessness so that people will do what they like. And then you see human beings, they fill up everywhere, but no child of God is seen there. Why? This is why you see verse 5. People just want to be increasing in number without righteousness. So you see people having a form of godliness but denying his power. And from such people turn away. The Bible said, and from such people do what? And from such people do what? Turn away. What must you do? You must do what? Turn away. So we have not been advised. God has not recommended that we must stay with that life. God did not recommend for us to do what? To stay with that. Turn away from it. Turn away from it. I want to pray for somebody today. Just in case you are battling with something you don't know, you have not seen it before, as it is. You take it personal. It's not personal. It is a time. It is a season. May God give you understanding. Are you the one who is living that life? Strive. Strive. Strive to live away from that kind of life. It is possible in Jesus' name. We shall examine the life of Noah to know how to profit from it and to survive from what? Perilous times. Just briefly think about it, but because of time, I won't go into it. Remember who Noah was? Noah was a righteous man living in the midst of people at such a time. But what did Noah do? They were busy eating and drinking and having their fuel. Praise God. They were doing as though there was no God. But Noah, looking at his time, God laid it on him to build like an ark. Inside that ark, God was going to demonstrate the kingdom so that people can still see what happens and see God and his glory. And that was what Noah did. Now, while they were in the ark, then the flood came and swept everybody away. And that was when they were now begging, knocking at the door. Please open the door. It was at a perilous time. You know the times of Noah. From the kingdom, from the start, it's not today. They have always had... If you look at Genesis chapter 6 verse 6, in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, God regretted creating man. Man has always, without Christ, been perilous. But every time there's a revival, maybe next week I'll take on revival because time is gone. Because I'm talking about revival in perilous times. But I wanted to, maybe I've done justice to perilous times. Next week I'll talk about revival in perilous times. I have to start closing so we can pray. So but Noah brought revival in his own times, in perilous times. I kind of believe, because sometimes you do things, you act like you are crazy. Sometimes people don't understand what we are trying to achieve in this mountain. But I just, in my heart, I feel that this should be like an ark, like the days of Noah, where people should be able to enter the gate undisturbed, be able to go up and at least pray, find your level, find water, use the bathroom. Because I used to be somebody that go to mountains and it can be terrible. You won't even see where to park your car if you really want to go to mountain to pray. Because most mountains I've been to, at least in the east, do not have these facilities. Even to find a bed, to just give you a token. Do you know what you are saying? Having a form of God, but denying the power of. But I'm telling them, we're still going to keep the discipline on. The rules are everywhere and you must follow it. On this mountain, no. The rules are everywhere. You must follow a rule. If you break a rule, you will not stay here. There were rules. God told Noah, this is how they will enter the ark. This is how they will behave. Look at when they 
time come, open this. Let the unclean beds go. Pick clean beds. This is when the spirit will return. They know that the flood is over. This is the signs. This is the signs. If you allow people, they will shit everywhere. You know what we told them? God cannot accommodate rebellion, disobedience. You must follow law. If you cannot follow system, there is something wrong with you. Lawlessness is a sign of what? Godlessness. Lawlessness is what? A sign of what? Godlessness. Wherever there is God, they talk about holiness and cleanliness. God is a God of order. God is a God of systems. People want to jump all the systems. Can we pray? Let's ask God, deliver us from lawlessness. You know, can you imagine how many animals that survive in that ark? If there was no system in that ark, would they have survived for the number of years they had to stay there? Noah built an ark as was instructed and he moved with godly fear and in all righteousness built and dwelt on it. Let me explain something to you. Please, don't because of what people will say, miss out the pattern. There's a pattern to build a marriage. There's a pattern to build a family. There's a pattern to build your business. There's a pattern to build your relationship. No matter how lawless the world is, maintain the pattern of God. Noah built his pattern. Not minding how godless and how lawless the world is. Keep the rules. Keep it. At least, if anything, when they come close to you and they observe you and they see what God is doing, at least there will be a sign. Somebody will be pointing. It's possible to serve God. You understand me? Yes, man of God. You don't need to go to join a cult or collect charms for God to enrich you. It's possible to serve God with clean hands. Just be open. Be free. You can serve God without joining something or going somewhere to get that power. You can. It's possible to prosper in business. Just follow the commandments. Follow the word of God. It is possible to live faithful as a wife. To live holy as a daughter. It is possible to live counter and come against these things that are said. It is possible in this perilous time. Is it? Yes, it is. How? It is because we found out that Noah was obedient to the voice of God. Noah was what? Obedient to the voice of God. Noah was obedient to the voice of God. Why did I say it's possible? Oh, my dear, I will try to round up. I'm really off time now. Hmm? So I'm going to be a bit faster. We found out that, that because he was obedient to the voice of God. We're about to pray now. If we can stand up, okay? Let's get up. We're going to pray now. And I, I really want you to please pray and ask God to make it possible for you, in Jesus' name, okay, to be obedient to the voice of God. See, this is a time God is speaking to every one of us, either in your streets, in your house. You cannot bring revival by not giving. And Anaya and Sapphire will kill them because they want to eat other people's own and they don't want to give. Are you ready to pray? You may want to ask God, say, Lord, in this perilous time, give me a heart that is prompt to obey every detail of your word. Pray that prayer. Say, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Can I tell you something? There is a prayer I want you to pray. I want you to pray a prayer from the heart. It have, you know, there's a prayer you pray from the heart. God answers it. I don't need noise now. You are not shouting to anybody. You are asking God now. It's from your own heart. He's going to answer you. We are, we are preparing for revival in perilous times. You know? You will survive these perilous times. Pray, for, pray these simple prayers. There's an effective prayer. Effective prayer of a righteous man. It's available more. Say, oh God, in these perilous times, give me a heart that is prone to obey every detail, every detail of your word in the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, in these perilous times, thank you, Holy Spirit. Give me a heart. I don't know, but there are already deliverances going on here right now. There are people that are here. There are some things you have been battling with and it's coming out of you right now. Some of you are here sick.
but God is already healing you in the name of our Lord Jesus. How do I know? You will feel it in your stomach as if something is coming off from your stomach. There is a fire that is enveloping you. There is a fire of the Holy Spirit that is enveloping you. That thing that has made it difficult for you to hear God and to obey God. The fire of God is coming upon you for your deliverance right now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I command every demon resisting God in your life to begin to leave you right now in the name of our Lord Jesus. Powers that are responsible for this wickedness and evil that we are discussing this period. There is a fire that is prompting those demons to begin to come out of you, to get out and to go to the pit one way in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's already a possibility because of the deliverances that is taking place right now. Receive that fire. Receive that fire. Receive that fire. Receive that fire. Receive that fire in the name of Jesus Christ. So they, they either, either, Yes, you may have to cough it out. You may have to yawn it out in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Some of you will start to yawn it out. Some of you will come to gather either, either, unde gade, gade, bagade, ina, ina, gude, gade, managan, de gaba. Oh Lord, remove far from me every bad influence that will arise to corrupt my mind. Pray that prayer. Say, oh God, oh God, remove far from me every bad influence that will arise to corrupt my mind. Some of us are ready and willing, but there are bad influence that are there to corrupt your mind, to stop you and to take you back again to begin to live your life in this perilous times in this perilous season say oh god remove far from me every influence that will arise to corrupt my mind lord release them remove them from my children remove them from my husband remove them from my spiritual children remove them from my household remove them from the work from the assignment every bad influence that will arise to corrupt what God wants to do this season in the name of Jesus. Father, remove them far away from me. Father, deliver me from them. Every bad influence, every wicked spirit that will arise, that I will not do the will of God, that will influence my mind, that will poison me negatively. I ask God in the name of Jesus, Father, quench their evil fire. Father, quench their negative spirits in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Whatsoever that attracts me to evil, whatsoever that attracts me to wickedness, whatsoever that causes my family to walk in lawlessness, even if the influence is my father, or it's my mother, or it's my brother, or it's my sister. The Bible says if you have to be a disciple of me, you have to deny them. If it's your parents that are taking you to native doctors, if it's the members of your family that are opening you up to unrighteousness, there are women in these perilous times. They know that their children are dating married men. And that woman is busy collecting money from the child. And the child is not repenting because of the evil mother. As God in the name of Jesus, deliver me from the influence of my evil mother. In the name of our Lord Jesus, remove me far from every bad influence that will arise to corrupt my mind. That will arise to corrupt my mind. It can be your phone. It can be your over involving and indulging in social media it can be the source of the masturbation it can be the source of the pornography it can be the source of immorality it can be friends that you go to bar with it can be friends that you go to business with and you think you must hang out with them but say oh god remove me far not just remove me but remove me far some of us can't even pray this prayer because some of these attachments have been so long some of these attachments is as though we Without them, I cannot make it. But I will still stand on this altar to tell you the truth. The truth is this. Evil company, the corrupt good manners. You must remove them. The Bible says, remove far from me every bad influence that will arise to corrupt my mind. Pray it, God will find a way of delivering you. Pray it, God will find a way of saving you. Pray it, God will find a way of separating you in the name of Jesus. Pray the next prayer. We discover that Noah moved to obey God with godly fear. Noah moved. Noah moved. Noah moved. Abraham moved. We must have the fear of God in our heart to survive this age. It is the fear of God that made Abraham to move. You know, Abraham was 
from Haran and his father's house were into heavy and massive idolatry and evil worship. But Noah had to move. Noah had to move. Abraham had to move. Emeka has to move. Today is your day, Emeka. There's something God will do in your life that will become permanent. There's someone that is here and God is going to move you. If your mother's food is from sacrifice or your sister there is an idol that they worship and they bring meat that is sacrifice and you know that you don't have a conscience you cannot eat it and be free then you must not continue to eat it i tell you today that eating or that food whatever it represents it may be money that is coming from an evil altar it may be food that is coming from an evil kitchen i believe god that god is saying you must move it may be work that you are doing and resign it may be business that you are doing maybe you are running a beer parlor and it's clear to you that that beer parlor god no longer approves it that means you are going to shut down that beer parlor it's difficult but i will say it because it's the word of god he expects you to move you will not be there eating and drinking in these last days know how to leave them know how to set himself apart whatsoever you do that communicate destruction and death whatever is a business maybe you are into adulteration of goods and it's causing death in the lives of people hear me you must move you must close it you must set it apart in the name of our lord jesus christ amen somebody amen somebody amen somebody if it's a chemical thing you are involved in you must be sure you are doing the right thing amen praise the father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Rest upon me that spirit of the fear of God. That spirit of the fear of God. What you will not give your child to eat. Do not give it to the public. Do not give it to the public. Hmm? Let the spirit of the fear of God rest upon me. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's take the next prayer point. Say, Oh Lord. Take away anything that is causing my heart to be hardened. That command. Take away from me anything that is making my heart to be hardened. You may think that you are doing it. It's not you. There's a spirit behind it. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus. Take away from me everything that is making my heart to be hardened. To be hardened, God. To be hardened. Whatever it is that makes me oh god to be hardened father take it away from me whatsoever that is making my heart to be hardened father take it away from my heart today he will hear you pray he will do it ask you will receive in the name of jesus you will receive in the name of jesus take away from me anything that will make my heart hardened hardened oh god take it away from me in the name of jesus take it away from me in jesus name say oh lord i pray turn every heart of stone in me to a heart of flesh turn every heart of stone in me ha that thing is common in this perilous time oh. There's something happening in our heart. I cannot explain it. But if you a child that you carried for nine months, we're looking at that child. We're looking at your child. Your child has not eaten. Yet you carry the money, enter the market, and then you start buying clothes, fashion. Fashion conscious. You buy with on human hair. Your husband gave money to feed his children. And you are spending 100, 200,000 on human hair. By the time you are done with fashion, f a, a, a shopping, 450,000 spent on yourself. Children go without food. Just buy nonsense for the children. You know? 
In our days, in the days of our mothers, they sold their wrappers. A woman will go to her box and do what? Bring out her wrappers to see that her children are fed and that her children go to school. They own wrappers. They don't cut it as an investment. They own jewelries. They kept them as an investment so that when their family is in need, they will bring it out and they will give to their husband. Business is bad. Put this to the business and stand again. But not our generation. Not this generation. Not this generation. You see how much a man is getting. You see that all his tankers are grounded. You see where that man is. You are making enough money to repair even one keke or to repair one tanker. You are watching the man is dying. You come home and fight him. You fight him because the business he started for you is moving. You know that he doesn't have money to give food, but you are insisting he must feed his family. What kind of generation? What kind of wickedness has God today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ? Turn this heart of stone to become a heart of flesh. Let us reason. Let us weigh things. Who said it's only a man now that will train the children? Things are already hard for two people, let alone one person. If you are rich, your children are going to school where you pay 2 million, 1.5 for one child. You pay rent 3.5. Families are spending 5 to 10 million. In this Enugu, rent is 3 million in a duplex. Schools, the average of 800, 600. A man needs 5 million a term to carry through the children. A man cannot carry out this thing alone. It's gone at those times. Gone at those times. I got happen working here in a no. Those times are gone. Man will bring, woman will bring, heart will bring, and love will bring, trust will bring, faith will bring, belief will bring, confidence in God will bring, family will agree, and God will sustain the family in the name of Jesus Christ. I say God will sustain the children in the name of Jesus. I say God will sustain the family again in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. There's a hard prayer point coming. Are you ready for that prayer point? Pray after me. Say, Oh Lord. Give me the enabling grace to desist from anyone who is living a perverse lifestyle. Give me the enabling grace to desist from anyone who is living a perverse lifestyle. Pray that prayer. There's something God is doing here. He's taking away things from people's livers, from people's kidneys. I don't know what it is. Whether it's physical liver or, or spiritual liver. Maybe it's the liver. As not a liver. If you know, you know what is kidney? Maybe the one that refines. The one that refines. God is doing something here. Yes. God is doing something here. This is the kind of prayer that after this kind of meeting, you will begin to see yourself living a revived life a revived life you'll be different in such a generation because of what god is doing here because of what god is doing here in your life in my life in jesus name we found out that noah built an ark okay in the perilous times and there was an exemption to those who dwelt in that ark so we must build a strong altar where we fellowship and have intimacy with God on a daily basis for us to survive this period of lawlessness and perverse generation. We must do that. We need a strong altar to survive these times. I'm not just talking here because of what I'm doing here. I know we can't do it with our own flesh, okay? That's why we are re-strategizing. It's taken me more than a year to train a squad for this time. More than a year. It was a lot of battles. But after a while, it's sitting. So even when you start with your family, don't expect all of them will come. Just suggest, let us do a family prayer. Maybe once a month, let's do three days fasting and close it. Some will come, some will not come, but continue. The prayer of one or two people that started, we sustain others, they will join. Once they see that people are doing it and resources start coming, others will start joining. Start 
You need a strong altar, a strong personal altar. We're going to pray the next prayer. And the next prayer is going to be direct to your soul. Say, my father, increase my hunger and my desire for your presence. I need that prayer. Pray it as I'm going to pray it. You know, this is a time we are so busy. If you don't have a hunger and a desire, that's one of the things we want to do on our Sunday meetings. Hunger and desire for the presence of God. Do you desire to study the Bible again? Hunger and desire for the presence of God. Hunger and desire for your presence. Let the fire of your love touch my soul in Jesus' name. Pray that prayer. Say, Lord, let the fire of your love touch my soul in the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer. Say, my father, grab me deep access to your presence. Deep access, deep access to your presence in Jesus' name. Pray again. Say, oh Lord, remove anything that will take me away from your presence. Do you know God just opened somebody's portals right now? Access to information. Access to your spiritual life. Access. God will start teaching you how to pray, when to pray, and when you pray to have communion with him and to make your worship and your fellowship time your best moment. You are welcome to this great season. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. There are three things to do this season to build up yourself. Number one is fasting. When you fast, you deprive your cravings. When you fast, you weaken your appetite. When you fast, it makes it easy for you to obey God. Fasting prepares you for temptation and gives you victory over every temptation. The second thing that we do is to give. When you give, you learn to share love. And you learn to sacrifice to other people. The third thing that you will do is to pray. When you pray, it shows you are dependent on God. And helps you. Just like this kind of simple prayers. You can take one of these prayer points that touches the greatest of your need. And I tell you, as we unwind heaven, not only will he hear. Paul wrote prophetically. But know this, that in the last days, perilous times will come. These seasons are upon us, as I've already said. The world lives with a daily threat. When and where terrorists will attack them. When and where kidnappers will attack. When and where armed robbers will take over. The nations of the world has been on a state of high alert. Nigeria is on a state of high alert. What will happen in the month of May. But many nations are yet to stand and pick up their refuge in God, seeing the effects of these evil days. We are standing today to say that we are going to pick up our confidence in God, seeing these prophetic days. Follow me, we declare there shall be no war. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus, there shall be no war. We are actually in the season of the Feast of Glory. And as we are as we continue to engage in the Feast of Glory, it's going to be for us as it was in the season of the COVID, you know? People say there will be COVID. We are doing 5 a.m. prayer, if you remember, from the beginning of the COVID to the end of what? When men refused to come out, they were afraid of their life. <laughs> we are driving on this road every morning, and we are here, and COVID came and went. We are going to continue feasting the glory of God. We will not see ashes. Vultures will not take over our homes. Death shall not be upon us in the name of Jesus. You know, did you remember we are prophesying how 25th of February will come? And we are asking God how it will be for us to see this day come. Have we not seen it? I'm also telling us that we shall see March next year. 50 weeks from now. 50 is the number of waiting of Pentecost and power. We are waiting 50 weeks from now. 50 what? New Nigeria has already been born. It was born on the 25th of February. You are seeing Keke 
drivers now becoming members of House of Assembly. It's not a new Nigeria that a place like Imo State overnight, a whole party was swept off. Is it not new Nigeria? Can't you feel the impact? This is new Nigeria. Say to your neighbor, welcome to new Nigeria. We, we gather as we feast and strengthen the altar. In 50 weeks, amen, somebody, by the month of March, this fuel crisis will survive it. We survive the kerosene crisis. We survive the diesel crisis. We will still survive the fuel crisis in Jesus' name. If we have survived having only 5,000 naira, did you know you will survive without spending 20,000 as cash? But you have survived cashless seasons. We will survive it again in the name of Jesus Christ. 50 weeks from now, we shall see power. Somebody say power. Nigeria shall exhibit glory like never before. In the name of our Lord Jesus. There's going to be an unprecedented move of God. His spirit and power. Again, we'll see great revivals that will sweep across nations. We're going to see great torrents of God again in Jesus' name. Matthew 24 verses, Jesus said that we will hear of the wars and rumors of war. We now went further to list the following signs, okay, of the perilous times. Nations will rise against nations, famine, pestilence, and all these things. That is what we're expecting, but guess what? At the end of it, the elect shall be preserved. The Lord shall preserve us. I said we shall survive it all. I said we shall survive it all. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall survive it all. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus.